Lab Plus is the Department of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine at Auckland City Hospital and is responsible for processing thousands of samples and specimens every day. The close partnership between the scientists and pathologists help diagnose and plan the treatment of patients from Auckland's growing population. Lab Plus is, is one, probably one of the largest laboratories in New Zealand, um, I guess because of the population that we have and we have a very diverse ethnic population in Auckland. The areas that we have that other laboratories might not have um, are our Diagnostic Genetics Department, we have a large Forensic Pathology Department, we are a reference laboratory for TB testing in New Zealand and the, we work closely with the, the medical school so we have the opportunity to develop new tests um, and new processes. So we also work a lot with the clinical staff, with clinical trials, with um, them requesting data for us to look at how they can manage you know, patients and get information in that regards. Lab Plus employs over 400 scientists and technicians testing over a million samples a year and they produce over four and a half million results for patients. The journey to a diagnosis often begins with a visit to a doctor. So a patient may be feeling unwell and go to visit their GP. The GP may suspect that perhaps they've got lymphoma, which is a form of cancer. But to rule out other diseases, they'll need to take a blood test, which they'll send to the laboratory. That will come first to haematology laboratory. Haematology is the study of blood. The most common blood test is a blood count, which is carried out by Lab Plus's automated analyzers. The analyzers measure the amount of red cells, white cells and platelets in the blood and a wealth of information can be gathered from such a simple test. We're mostly looking for things like leukaemia, lymphoma, um, clotting disorders, um, iron deficiency, which is the most common you will get in hematology. Our analyzers will count up to 10,000 cells and put it onto a graph in different colors showing the different populations. Um, if we don't feel like we can tell the entire story of these graphs and these analyzer inputs and numbers, like because it calculates how much red cells there are, how much white cells there are, how much platelets there are, we'll make a blood film and that will be stained um, with the different colors um, and we'll look at that under a microscope to see whether we can see any normal cells or abnormal cells. If the cells that you see are that are abnormal, you'll take another route of investigation and you'll be doing different sets of tests to be able to confirm whether those cells are abnormal, whether they're cancerous, whether they are just benign. We're a diagnostic laboratory, not a research one. So in diagnostic, what we are trying to achieve is accurate, precise diagnosis of patient results, faster turnaround time of being able to diagnose a patient. Um, so that kind of area is still yet to be developed a lot more. The laboratory are really like the detectives, so the GP will have an, um, a feeling about how you clinically present of what may be wrong with you, but he doesn't really or she doesn't really know that until they've got some evidence. So we really are the detectives that find the evidence for those doctors to make a clinical diagnosis. And that's part of the role that is really exciting. A blood count eliminates diseases from the suspect list, but further investigation is needed to come up with a definitive diagnosis. For a suspected lymphoma, a biopsy of the lymph node may be taken and delivered to the histology department for analysis. Now, these specimens are often very, very small, and these specimens have a wealth of information in it. Our scientists over here will handle it, will examine, examine it very carefully, and they will transfer it into a cassette. Now, this cassette will then go on through processing and will be embedded into paraffin wax. We'll cut thin sections of it. Then we stain it with um, a routine h and &E stain and some special stains. But the real kick in it is when we take it to immunohistochemistry, where we will stain it to see if there are any tumor, any specific tumors in there. And that is how a lymphoma patient is diagnosed. The samples are very precious. You think of someone that's having a biopsy um, taken, they've got a tumor that they suspect is malignant and they take a biopsy, you can't go back and get that biopsy. So if we don't treat it correctly, you know, we really are affecting the outcome of that patient. They won't get the result that they were wanting. 
The type of chemical stain that binds to a cancer cell will give scientists an indication of the specific cancer they are dealing with. Sometimes um, some tissues can be very hard to diagnose. No matter how many numbers of tests you do, you go down one pathway and it seems like a dead end. You go down another pathway and it seems like a dead end. But when you keep pursuing with the limited amount of tissue you have, when you keep pursuing and finally there is something, there is, you found a diagnosis, you found the condition, you found the cause of it, there is a satisfaction that, hey, you know, all that effort that you put into, all the manpower, all that time or the money that you put into it will be paid off. Each one of us knows someone that has been affected by cancer. All of us, we've got cancer, it's, it's rampant in our communities these days, so it's a friend or a, or a parent sometimes. So cancer is everywhere and that is the kind of patients that we see here, that is the samples that we see here. It touches close to heart, I guess, and it helps um, to know that you're helping a patient out there, helping their treatment plan and helping them to recover to health sooner. The goal of a full patient recovery is central to a medical laboratory scientist's work, but what does the future of histology hold? There's always an opportunity to learn and grow in histology um, because technology is always emerging. Um, our medical conditions are always changing, so we've always got to um, tailor and change our um, procedures and our processes to be able to diagnose the medical conditions out there. So there's always an opportunity to learn and we work very closely with our pathologists over here to be able to achieve that. Many tumours that were incurable say 20 years ago, like a child's Wilms tumour, uh, are now very responsive to treatment and this is true for many lymphomas, uh, and, and other tumours right across the spectrum, including breast cancer. And, and what we do as pathologists and being able to very accurately define what sort of tumour it is, tell the surgeons whether they've left any tumour in the body or whether it's all out, tell the surgeons whether there's metastasis to lymph nodes and tell the oncologist whether this tumour is going to respond to Herceptin or other modalities of drug treatment. It's very, very important in treating these patients. In our role, we are like detectives, but we also we're interpreting. We're always looking and questioning and asking, what else can be done? Is this does this look right? Is, it, is this abnormal? Why is it abnormal? Are our machines working well? You know, is is this what we expect? So we're always questioning. We're always challenging. We're always digging a little bit deeper. The deepest level a medical scientist can dig to today is the genetic information expressed in our DNA, which often reveals clues that can make all the difference for a patient's quality of life. I work in the cytogenetics area, so we're looking at people's chromosomes. Um, my speciality is bone marrow, so we're looking at people with leukaemia um, and some tumours, lymphomas, um, so that we can see what we find can affect their diagnosis and their prognosis. There are basically two levels that scientists can analyse genes which can reveal very different information about a patient's condition. Investigation of chromosomes can reveal damage to cells that have caused the cancerous change. We're looking at gross abnormalities, so quite large abnormalities. We're not looking at you know, individual genes that your molecular stuff is looking at, we're looking at something quite large. So say you've been diagnosed with acute promyelocytic leukaemia. So that's a leukaemia that always, most of the time, has what we call a 15-17 translocation. Translocations occur when DNA is damaged while duplicating. The position of the translocation is used to confirm the type of cancer a patient has and is detected with a FISH test. FISH is a fluorescent in situ hybridization. So it's when we put fluorescent probes on a particular gene and then look down a fluorescent microscope, it will come up with colourful pictures, colourful dots. And then you can see quite clearly if that gene is there or if there's a rearrangement going on with that gene. The advantage of being able to see what's going on in a leukaemic patient chromosomally is um, you can create a treatment regime specific to that patient. So being able to tell whether it's what abnormalities it does have, it will then make the doctors tailor make a treatment regime for that patient. I love knowing that I'm actually helping, making a difference. Um, I know we're in the background, people don't know who we are. Um, 
but you know our role is very important and I just love knowing that we're really helping people. The findings of the medical laboratory scientists, pathologists and medical staff are discussed at regular multidisciplinary meetings where personalised treatment plans are devised for patients, giving them the greatest chance of a positive outcome. Although we may have not made a diagnosis, it's not the end because that patient needs to have treatment and we will continually monitor their progress throughout that treatment. So the, the, the patient will have many more samples sent to the laboratory and uh, we will analyse those to give the, the clinician an indication of how that patient's performing. Laboratory science is a growing field with many new opportunities. So what advice would our scientists give to people interested in joining the profession? I would say to them that um, think big picture. Um, there is the current discipline as it is set up but slowly but surely the disciplines are merging and there is um, amalgamation of technology as well. So think about bigger things like st statistical analysis, um, information technology and quality um, processes and quality systems. I would say that you sh to be multidisciplined meaning that you know you have knowledge of biochemistry and haematology depending on what, what your areas of interests are if you like microbiology then be microbiology and immunology and virology because that's potentially those departments will be merging so we're focusing more on the technology and the instrumentation that's available and then we're forming departments around those you have to have a whole heap of skill sets not just being a scientist in the traditional sense. 